Welcome grade 10s to this lesson in the series on energy. Today we will look at mechanical energy. What do we mean by the term mechanical energy? Well, mechanical energy is the sum of both kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, and potential energy, energy due to position. An object has mechanical energy if that object is in motion or if the object has potential energy due to the object's position in a gravitational, magnetic or electric field. Let's look at a few examples. A car that is in motion on the highway possesses mechanical energy due to its kinetic energy. And a barbell lifted high above the weightlifter's head possesses mechanical energy due to its vertical position above the ground. This is the gravitational potential energy of the barbell. We know that kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It does not matter whether it is vertical or horizontal motion. Anything that is moving has kinetic energy. Remember that the formula for the calculation of kinetic energy is capital E subscript K equals half M multiplied by V squared. Where EK represents the kinetic energy measured in joules, M represents mass in kilogram, and V is the velocity of the object in meters per second. Potential energy is energy due to an object's position in a gravitational, magnetic, or electric field. We will focus on gravitational potential energy. That is the energy because of the height of the object above the ground. We calculate the gravitational potential energy of an object with the formula capital E subscript P equals the product of MGH. In this equation, M represents the mass of the object in kilograms, H represents the height of the object above its reference point in meters, and G is the gravitational acceleration. Remember that on Earth, G has a value of 9,8 meters per second squared. As we have said, mechanical energy is the sum of the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy of a system. To represent the physical quantity, we use the symbol capital E subscript M. Since it is a form of energy, it is measured in joules. That has the symbol J. The total mechanical energy, E subscript M, equals the gravitational potential energy, E subscript P, plus the kinetic energy, E subscript K. In some textbooks, the author uses the symbol U for mechanical energy, P for gravitational energy, and K for kinetic energy. You should be aware of this, but we will not use this notation. When we substitute the formulae for kinetic energy and for gravitational potential energy, we get the total mechanical energy is equal to the product of the mass of the object, gravitational acceleration, and height of the object plus the product of half the mass of the object and the square of the velocity. It is very easy to find lots of examples of mechanical energy all around us. Let's consider people on a roller coaster ride. At the top of the rise, they have a maximum gravitational potential energy, and at the bottom, they have maximum kinetic energy but no gravitational potential energy. We consider the lowest point of the track as our reference point. At the top, the cart is the maximum height, so their gravitational potential energy is a maximum. They start at the top, therefore they have no kinetic energy. On their way down, the kinetic energy increases. They go faster and faster, while their potential energy decreases. At the bottom, their kinetic energy is at a maximum. As the rise grows steeper on their way up again, they slow down and their kinetic energy decreases but the height from the bottom of the track increases, so the gravitational potential energy increases. We can summarize the motion of the roller coaster cart with a diagram. At the top, the cart possesses only gravitational potential energy. Since mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy, the roller coaster cart has mechanical energy in each position. 
On the way down, the gravitational potential energy decreases, but the kinetic energy increases. When they are at the bottom, the cart has only kinetic energy and no gravitational potential energy. The total mechanical energy at the top of the hill is still the same as the total mechanical energy at the bottom of the hill, as all the gravitational potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy. On the way up again, the kinetic energy is converted into gravitational potential energy again, and the cart goes slower and slower. Throughout the motion down and up, the roller coaster cart has mechanical energy. If it was possible to have no friction, the mechanical energy would be conserved. The conservation of mechanical energy means that the sum of the kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy remains constant throughout. However, mechanical energy is not conserved if energy is put into the system or taken out. Let's do an example on mechanical energy where a weightlifter puts a lot of energy into the system. A weightlifter lifts a barbell off the ground at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. What will the total mechanical energy be at half a meter above the ground if each of the mass pieces on the barbell has a mass of 25 kilograms? Note that the weightlifter does not stop at this point. He continues to lift the barbell upwards. Now, identify everything we were given. Since there are two mass pieces on the barbell, each with a mass of 25 kilogram, our total mass is 50 kilograms. Next, we see that he is lifting the barbell at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. The weightlifter has already lifted the barbell half a meter above the ground, which is our point of reference. Therefore, h equals 0, 0,5 meters. Finally, since the mass pieces experience the gravitational field of the Earth, the gravitational acceleration g equals 9,8 meters per second squared. Since we have all the information now, we can substitute it to the formula and calculate the answer. The gravitational potential energy is calculated as mgh, which is 50, multiplied by 9,8 times 0, 0,5. This gives an answer of 245 joules. The kinetic energy of the barbell, which is half the mass of the object multiplied by the velocity of the motion squared, works out at 625 joules. The mechanical energy is the sum of the potential and kinetic energy. We use a calculator and find that the mechanical energy at that time is 870 joules. Let's see what the total mechanical energy is when the weightlifter reaches the highest point and holds the barbell above his head. The height is 2,4 meters above the ground. We follow the same procedure as before. The mass is still 50 kilograms, but the velocity is zero. The weightlifter holds the barbell 2,4 meters above the ground and the gravitational acceleration g equals 9,8 meters per second squared. We substitute all of these values into the formula, including the zero for velocity. The total mechanical energy at this point is equal to 1,176 joules. As you can see, this is not the same as the total mechanical energy while he was lifting up the barbell. So, we can conclude that the total mechanical energy was not conserved and the weightlifter put energy into the system as he lifted the weights up. In our next lesson, we will investigate this phenomenon further. Until then, practice some more of these type of questions that you will find in your task video. You will also find more information on our website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.